Now today we'll be replacing an old catalytic converter with a brand new one, in this case a 2011 Subaru Outback with 174,000 miles. Let's start by jacking up the vehicle right behind the front bumper. You have the front cross member, it's a solid beam that runs along the entire length of the vehicle. There's also another beam in my case right behind that oil pan. And then I'm going to lower the jack on two jack stands. As you can see, you have a frame rail right there. And another one on the passenger side. Here we go. Now I'm going to remove this plastic piece. It's a little dam that runs into the air filter housing. And just plastic tabs here, just pulling up on them. Now before we remove the catalytic converter, you have a number of oxygen or air fuel sensors. So right here is the front air fuel sensor, just to give you another view. This is the front of the engine, that's the air fuel sensor, and right back there is the rear oxygen sensor. That's before the cat, that's after the cat. Now with the new catalytic converter, we have new sensors. It's always a good idea to replace them since you're doing this job. So instead of removing the sensors, I'm just going to disconnect the harness connectors. So right here at the 9 o'clock position is a tab. There we go. That's disconnected. And over here it's at the 12 o'clock. Back here. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Hold on. That way, when we remove the catalytic converter, the sensors will just will keep the sensors attached to it. Now looking underneath the vehicle, right here is the entire assembly. So I have a connection point here, looks like three fasteners, and then just follow the exhaust, another one at the driver's side cylinder head, another one at the passenger side cylinder head. Now before I start removing these, I'm, I just have some PB blaster just to spray these down and just let it soak, especially on a Subaru, they're well known to break fasteners. Now this is a 2011 Outback, 174,000 miles. Here in the Northeast, these cars get hit pretty hard with the snow, the rain, the nasty weather and everything else. So what I'm doing is just removing as much rust as I can from the studs because again, I don't want anything to snap on me. Now if you're familiar with my videos, you know that I hardly ever use any power tools. So just basic hand tools. This is a breaker bar gives you a very, very long handle so you can really crank these fasteners off. Then I'm going to switch over to a half inch drive ratchet as opposed to three inch drive. And that's because the half inch drive just gives you a lot more leverage so you can really put your strength into it. So this is the driver side cylinder head. And I'm just going to back these off. This is a 14 millimeter fastener. And here we go. All right, the breaker bar, as you can see, makes it very, very easy. And this is the passenger side. As you can see, I'm, I take it very, very slowly because, again, I don't want to snap anything. Just ease into it. Now the last fastener, now the last fastener I just cannot fit the breaker bar so I have an offset wrench as you can see it's angled to fit in tight spaces. Let me see if I can bring you in here. Where is it? Hold on. You can probably see it right on top but okay something like that and then just put all your strength into it. Now before I remove these fasteners, I placed another jack stand underneath this part of the exhaust. That's because this may come down a little bit and I don't want to put too much strain on the rest of the exhaust. So just place a little jack stand so I can catch it just in case. But these are nice and loose and then I'll move over to the, uh, to the head bolts.
Now don't forget, I have the jack stand here because it's going to catch it in a moment. I have one more fastener left. See, grab the exhaust, otherwise the whole thing wants to pop down. Let me see if I can get this off. Hold on. Convert. I'm just going to clean up any leftover gasket on both cylinder heads, okay? And also right here, of course, this looks pretty clean because they used uh, some kind of aftermarket gasket, really was garbage. So I have new gaskets for everything now. So here we have the old converter lined up with the new one, and I want to make sure that all the mounting points seem to be the same as they do, so everything looks to be in good shape. Also, I have the new sensors. I went with Denso. They are a little bit more money, but very high quality. Uh, same pretty much in line of Bosch in terms of the pricing. So that's what we're running there. And this is a California approved converter because this vehicle is pretty much used in the state of New York. So you pay a little bit more. This was close to $500. The non-California, a little less than $400 for this vehicle. So altogether, what you see here, about 650 bucks, I think it cost me in that ballpark. So. Now before we reinstall the converter, I'm going to loosely install both sensors and also if you remember on the old converter there were three studs of where the converter met up with the rear exhaust or the rest of the exhaust, the cat back exhaust. And you can remove those. If you want to attempt that, you can use a vice grip, just grab a rubber hose, cut it in half and place it over the jaws of the vice grip so you don't chew it up. And then you can just get a good grip and slowly back it out. I'm not even going to waste my time with that. So I have new fasteners. This is, or these are M10 fasteners. The factory is M9. And so you can, that's perfectly fine. These are a little bit thicker and they do fit, as you can see. Now I'm going to reinstall the sensors. As you can see, I'm using a little bit of anti seize compound on the thread. And then once the exhaust is bolted or the converter is bolted back up to the vehicle, then I'll fully tighten the sensors. But at this point, they're just going to be loosely installed. So just take your time, line everything up. Try to clear the whole dot. Let me just clear these wires. Sort of getting tangled around the oil filter. I don't want that to happen. Okay. Let me grab the fasteners. Now, fortunately, this isn't too heavy, but if you can have someone hold the uh, converter for you, of course, that will certainly help. Now, you may be wondering, as I was installing this converter, I had it angled slightly, but the gasket was holding. That's because I used a very, very small amount of super glue just to hold the gasket. Not a lot maybe a drop or two, just hold it in place. It'll burn off once the vehicle starts. So I'll install this gasket here and tighten everything down. Now two things before we lower the vehicle. Number one is you don't see a heat shield here. You'll have to purchase a heat shield if you do want to reinstall that, uh, the factory heat shield. This is the heat shield, this is what it looks like. It's really made for tall grass. This far forward, it's not so much engine heat going in the cabin. It's if you park on tall grass, you don't want that to ignite. The other thing is when you install the converter, don't start by over torquing or over tightening, I should say, each fastener and moving on to the next. Loosely install all 
nine fasteners, okay? Then once everything fits right, situated correctly, then go back and tighten down the fasteners. Go ahead, reconnect the sensors. Now make sure you hear a clicking sound. Like that, okay. Okay. And the last thing I'm going to do is just erase the trouble code. So we can start on a clean slate. So as you can see, everything is nice and quiet here in the cabin. Let's also check for exhaust leaks. And as you can hear, everything is nice and quiet. I will double check those fasteners where they meet up to the cylinder heads in a couple of days to make sure everything's nice and tight. And uh, But other than that, we're in good shape.